It is September 14th. Yep. I'm sitting here with Joe Sprickelli, common spelling. Joe, I just had you identified to me earlier today as the man who has probably had the most influence on Tempe of anybody. Really? Really. <laughs> I don't believe that. Well... well you know, if I you think about it, I was on kids, but yeah, yeah, because all the years you were in the elementary school district, and as a teacher and as a principal, and uh, people that you've had influence over all these years, uh, and the things you've done with the activities for youth here, and, and ever since you've been a young man, are influential. And this lady recognized that and said, said yeah. that to me just this morning. I thought. Wow, that's a heavy burden, Joe. <laughs> it may be a burden, but it was, I it was loved it every was, second I was with it. To you do know it. it. Yeah. Well, that's what I miss the most is that contact and with kids on well, the bus. We're, we're, what, we're trying to make an oral record of people who have been in Tempe, and some of them have only been here since you know the 1980s, but you've been here for quite a while. It should be you know you and I, and I'm Bill Lotheridge, and you're Joe Sprickelly. Uh, we've known each other and had interaction with each other all since, my adult life. All you just since you've been a young teenager. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. so we've we've had a lot of interaction over the years. Yeah. So they have some <clears throat> questions here, and I to put that pin over there because I have a tendency to pick them up and click it, yeah, yeah. Okay. and it makes a noise on the tape. Click, 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 <laughs> click, <laughs> click, click. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it does. Oh. So. so we're going to eventually get to Tempe in terms of how you, you know, what, what your life was like in Tempe. But you had a life before you came to Tempe. What year did you come to Tempe? Came to Tempe in 1946. Actually, in 47. I was a Mason in 46. Came to Arizona in 1946. Okay, in Tempe. So you, you went to Mesa first, right? I was in Mesa. I graduated from Franklin Elementary School in Mesa, eighth grade. That's why I came in the eighth grade. Then I went to Mesa High my freshman year. Oh, see, that's a new piece of information mm -hmm. for me. That's a new piece. I guess I've heard you say that before. Yeah, I could sing them out, sing the school song if you want to hear it. They say, I'll brainwash your kid right quickly. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's then when I came start. to Tempe in '47. <clears throat> okay, and why did you come to Arizona? I came to Arizona because my stepfather. I was served in the uh, Marine Corps, was in Guadalcanal, came home with malaria. He was a construction worker. The Buffalo weather was killing him, so he decided we'd come to Arizona. And uh, he was going to come here. He bought a truck and was going to come out here and haul hay. But what he found out was uh, he wouldn't belong to that union, and they weren't about to accept him. So. Uh, they went flat on their back, so he went on construction here in Arizona, but then Arizona had a construction strike, so they all moved back to Buffalo, and I stayed here with my uncle. That's how I stayed in Arizona. Okay, so what was your stepfather's name? Art Schmidt. Art? Yeah, Arthur Adam Schmidt. S-C-H? S-C-H-M-I-T-T, -T, Schmidt. Okay. And his business in Buffalo was hauling hay, but he was no, 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 no. His business in Buffalo was construction. Oh, construction. The weather was killing him. Okay. And so he, he came, came down here. He came down here. Yeah, we had relatives here that convinced him that we'd come down here. And do Who this. were the relatives that were here? Gagliones. They were in Mesa. That's why we went to Mesa to begin with. Yeah. And home was in what city? Where was home? Where you started? Here? No, Buffalo, New York. That's Buffalo. Right. Outside Buffalo? Was it Buffalo, New York? Right in Buffalo, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was no suburb. We were right in the <clears throat> Avenue. So you came in 1947. Where did you live when you came into Tempe? Where was your house? We were on <clears throat> Maple Avenue, right there on the corner of Maple and 19th, and 9th Street, right where I was. Of course, my uncle was right next door, so mm -hmm. that's I only moved. The area right there now is an empty lot. The guy that used to own the restaurant there on Ash and uh, <coughs> 9th Street, 
Oh, nice that, ash. Bought that property that we lived. So, Do you know the name of that man? I can't remember the name of that guy. Vogels lived at Ninth and Ash in a house during the 1950s on Ninth and Ash yeah. that became the restaurant, but it wasn't a restaurant then. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember the address of the house that you lived into? Well, it could be. I can't remember the address. It was a Maple Street address? Yes. It was. This. Do you remember your neighbors there? Little old lady, but yeah. I can't remember. Mrs. Her. Willis? No, it wasn't Willis. Do you remember Mrs. Willis? I remember Mrs. Willis. But Did she live on Maple, too? Yeah, I think so. Okay. But, uh... I used to, we used to, my brother, my cousin and I used to, that little old lady was out there. She's, I should remember her name because I had no money, but the first form I went to, she made me the corsage. Yeah, I wish the hell I could remember her name. Well, it'll pop in your head. But we used to, every time we'd see her out in the morning, we'd come out of the bunkhouse and would yell and scream at her and scare the hell out. She'd be bending over doing her flowers and stuff. But I could just see that little, she was the sweetest little, little thing in the world. Put so, up with a dumb little uh, shit like me at that age, you know. So how old were you when you came here as a freshman? I was 14. 14, okay. Yeah, yeah. So. so in those early years, did you come during the school year? Mrs. McGinnis. Mrs. McGinnis. <laughs> yeah. Did she have children? I never saw any. Just she and her husband with her. I never saw Was she her. old enough to have adult children? Oh, she was an old lady. Okay. So the McGinnis family, do you remember any of the McGinnis boys when you were growing up? No. Okay. She was, like I said, she was, she was probably in her 70s or 80s. Okay. Bill. And she was just her, uh, she and her husband that were next door to us there. We let, our house was all adobe. Upstairs was where I slept, had no walls. It was just a screen and canvas. That was it. And did you put water on the canvas to cool off in the summertime? No. 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 I was upstairs in that place. But it was an adobe house. It was a, it was a dump. And it was it basically we paid two thousand dollars for it, hmm. <laughs> something like that. And your mother was uh, here, or this was with your uncle? No, that was with my mother and my stepdad. But that's the house we lived in. When they left, then I went on Ninth Street, Ninety West Ninth Street, which was right next door. One on Ninth Street. Our backyards backed up to each other. So, what was the address on Ninth Street? 19 West 9th 19 Street. West 9th Street. And that was your uncle's house? house? Huh? That was my uncle's house. And what was it, what was his name? Sam Muscari. So you were very close to the 8th Street School. Yeah. You were, oh, yeah. You were right across the street. Yeah. Okay. And right the high school was very close. Right across the street, yeah. I used to wait for the bell to ring, jump out of bed and go to school. Okay. Yeah. Didn't shower, brush my teeth, or anything. Just put my pants on and went to school. <laughs> Amazing. So you mentioned your cousin. That was Sam's son? Chick and Joe. Yeah. Charles Muscari and Joe Muscari were my cousins. And how old were they? Uh... Uh, they were a year behind me in school, so. And, and what year did you graduate from school? 51, they graduated in 52. Okay. No, yeah, 52. Yeah, and they were both, Chick was younger than Joe. He should have never been in the same class, but. They started they, him earlier or held one back? No, they didn't, they couldn't hold. Chick, when his brother went to school, there was no ending of him crying and screaming and yelling. Oh, so so the finally, school finally took him. <clears throat> so they stayed in the same And class. what school was that? 10th Street School? I don't know. Or did that they was, go to the 8th Street School? That was before I came to Arizona. Okay. Yeah. okay. They were already here because his dad, Uncle Sam had TB. That's why they came here. Okay. It took half as long now. 
Awesome. Okay, we're being joined by Sandy. We got the recorder yeah. running already, Sandy. Oh, you're, you're oh no, that's recording. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, so we, we've got Joe here. here from 1947 after he moved in from Mesa. And because you're such a strong unit, you and Joe, I think to do this interview together would be great. Well, okay. Paula's coming to, okay. to bring some lunch. She just yeah. came out of her first That's time fine. to radiation. We'll, we'll, we'll live with whatever happens. Yeah. Well, she already had radiation. No, yeah. just the doctor. Oh, just the, the doctor. doctor. Okay. okay, so we're talking about their daughter, Paula, who's do, undergoing some medical treatments. Uh, and uh, she'll Absolutely. be here in a little bit. Yeah. Okay, uh, Joe just came here. Tell me when you got here, Sandy. I got here, I came here in 1949. Uh, junior at Tempe High School. Went into Tempe High as a junior. And where did you come from? Well, I originally, I was in Tucson six months prior to that. And before that, I came from Elkhart, Indiana, where I had lived for 16 years. And what was your maiden name? Your Palmer. Your, Palmer. Yeah. And uh, why did your parents come to Tempe? We came, well, the reason we came to Tempe from Tucson was Pop Holderman from yes. Holderman School. Okay. He and my mom were from the same hometown in Indiana, Wakarusa. But the real reason they came to Tempe, and Arizona was the fact their dad had arthritis. Arthritis. So. We came for my father's health for okay. arthritis. That's why we left Elkhart. Um, and, but some, and we had a trailer, someone pulled a trailer. They said there wasn't any housing back then. So they pulled our, the trailer to Tucson. And we were there six months, I believe. I went to amphitheater for six months. Then Pop Holderman knew my mom, they connected, was here. And he said, come to Tempe and visit. We came to Tempe and we went back and got our stuff and moved. So did you bring your trailer back and live in the trailer for uh, a while? No, when we, we sold the trailer <coughs> down there, and I lived over on Maple. You were on Maple Avenue. Yeah, Maple yeah. Avenue. Do you remember the address? 11-something. <laughs> I can show you the place. But I, I can show you the White House, the little White House. Is, it, is the house still there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're all along all Maple. All that stuff, yeah. Maple, Maple and Ash, they're all together there. Yeah. Very... Of course, well, when they, some of those people sold their built apartments and stuff. Okay, so yeah. you were on Maple. Yeah, I yeah. was on Maple, and who lived close to me? Uh, was it do, uh, Nay from Mr. Mr. Nay? Nay. Mr. Nay yeah. from Tempe High, yeah. the top shop, lived close to me, and... Uh, What's his name? The guy who used to be the... Who was my swimmer? Uh, got shot at church. I'm having a scene. Oh, Caldwell. Or no... Oh. Uh, not called Will. No. So you were a junior when you came here. Mm -hmm. I and, went, and, and yeah. At the beginning of the year, you came in the summer, or did you come mid-year? I started the school year right in the middle of my junior year. In, and yeah. the, the house on Maple, uh, yeah, did you buy that house, or we were you rent, renting? No, we rented that. Do you remember uh -huh. who they were renting from? Okay. No. No, I don't all right. Have any idea? Well, it was right near the it was right near the railroad tracks, though, right? Oh no, I was further was Second uh, Street in or something. Farmers right on the railroad tracks. Yeah, Farmers is on the railroad yeah, track. That's, Piles that's, live down there. Yeah, yeah, and but I was further. What is that? North. You were north of. Farmers. Yeah, I was north of Farmers. I was. Well, the Ash, Maple. Uh, Maple is the first street off of Mill Avenue. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's where I was, yeah. Okay. So, but you say you're somewhere in the neighborhood of 13th Street, 12th Street, 10th, 9th Street? Uh, 11th Street. Probably 11th. 11th Street. I probably it was, was 11th close Street. to 11th. 11th Street. Yeah. yeah. They weren't uh, that close yeah, were you to close, Were you close to the pile? Uh, well, they were by the railroad tracks. Okay. Piles were down by the railroad tracks. Okay. Tommy and... Yeah, and uh, uh, the other pile was right Howard. there. Yeah, Howard uh, Pile. Howard Pyle was there, and then the other Pyle, Mr. Pyle, Tommy's dad, yeah, was right there on 13th Street, the first house on yeah. 13th Street. That house is still there. Yeah. Yeah. So when Virgil. you came, as a 12-year-old or a 14-year-old, when you, when you came here from Mesa, what did you do for recreation? Swim. <laughs> That's about all there was to do. Where, where did you swim? I swam at Redden Boo Park. When I first started here, I was at Rendezvous Park. That's in Mesa? Yeah. With 
the Willards were the coaches and the swimming people that ran the pool. I can remember them. In well. Mesa, and the Willards were ultimately their their granddaughters became diving. Well, their daughter became the daughter and went to the Olympics. That went to, okay, yeah. that was the Willards in Mesa. Yeah, and you knew that. And family. Then they stole all my kids from my <laughs> swimming team. When, when That's you, why I don't forget them. When, when you, I got all these kids in shape, and then they came and stole them. Okay. <laughs> So she did, the mother. Okay. Now, when did you become a coach at, when did you start swimming at Tempe Beach? I started swimming at Tempe when I first got here. Okay. And I got beat by every girl on the team. Beach that's swimming? A, a, uh, yeah. Coach Kowski, Kowski was, uh, Kowski was the coach at that time. Joanne. Miller. No. No. Jo Joanne Etches, no. Sidwell? No, no. Who swam? That beat you? She was the best damn girl. She could swim like, like her brother was a lifeguard at Tempe Beach. Oh. I dated her for a while. I can't even remember her name for crying out loud. So Tempe Beach was a freshwater pool. And filled by a well. Filled by a well. When did you start working there? I start working there. How old were you, more importantly? Seventeen, sixteen, As a teenager, seventeen. Okay, it's still in high school. Coach, Coach Koski didn't like to get in the water to teach the kids, so I was cleaning the pools, and all the money we found on the bottom we could keep. That was how I made my money. I didn't get paid, and then he asked me to teach the little kids to swim, the kids on the swim team, and that's when I started. So you're, when he left, I took over. So the configuration of the swimming pool, when you say the little kids, how did that work? What, what did the pool look like for children? Well, it was just like it was 50, 50 yards, 50 that, That's the big more. pool, but they had a small pool for children. They had a wading pool. They had a wading pool. Yeah, yeah. the baby pool. The baby right. pool, we called it. And that's yeah. where the well dumped in. No. Where did the well come in? See how did the well water get in there? I might be able to remember that. Well, you drained the pool. The well, we big drained pool. the pool three times a week. Yeah. Uh, so it had to get into. And see, the all pool. I can remember is a fire hydrant. That's after the well went dry. Okay. Yeah. Well, so you know, as a as a who were your friends when you were growing up? Marvin Williams. I Marvin remember. Williams says, did you meet him? How'd you meet Marvin Williams? Sports, the school, Tempe High. Ira Fulton, same way. So Ira was just, his mother's restaurant was right next, right there on Mill Avenue, 50 yards from my house where I was growing up. We were, that was our Tempe High School hangout was Ira's mother's little restaurant there. What was the name of it? Do you remember? Yeah. Was it Mom and Pops? Up? Could have been Mom and Pops. I don't really remember. Was it the one on 6th Street in well, Middle? I think where the Cow Palace was. Uh, yeah, Fish six, and Chips. Yeah. The, their property was right there before that stuff was. And Richfield? Was it Nevis Richfield there? There was a gas station right there on the corner, and they sold cars there, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've sketched out the swimming pool here. This is a big bunch of pool. This is this, this, they cut off part of the pool and had this. Yeah, well, it was 55 over. meters long, and that's when they cut this five meters off. Five meters so make it 100, and then that became the slide pool. Then there was a wading pool here. And that was a baby wading pool. And then over here was a little deeper wading pool, and here was the wellhead that dumped could, water yeah, into. Could been, yeah, it could have been. Into, and then it floated, it flowed through. From these wading pools all the way into the, that's how they filled the pool. Oh, did know. they? Through the... This was, this was the, the water came off of this, it was about three feet off the ground, and the yeah, water would yeah, pour yeah, out of yeah. that. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Out of this wellhead here. Yeah. Uh, about midway down the pool was a hut where you had the chlorine in it. Yeah. That's, well, it wasn't there when, when I started. When you started, no, but that's uh, because they didn't uh, probably put chlorine. Before that, we would use <clears throat> hand. I'd fed it chlorine. by hand. Right. So now you and Ira Fulton became friends and were palling around as uh, teenagers? Yep. Yep, we sure were. <laughs> we're known as the Tempe Hoods. <laughs> when, you, when you say the Tempe Hoods. Don't, don't print that. No, no, no. Okay. So 
because you were just running around having a good time. Did you have a bicycle? Not really. Okay. So where did you hang out as a Tempe Hood? Where did we hang out? On yeah. the corner. On the corner <laughs> or at the restaurant there at their mom's and pop's house. We played the pinball machines and we ate good chili there and she took pet us when we were hungry. So, okay. what else? So the businesses, main, uh, the main street in Tempe, uh, in Tempe was Mill Avenue, of course. Mill so Avenue is where it all happened. All the businesses up and down Mill Avenue. Did you frequent any of those businesses over the years? Did I do what? Frequent. Go to them. Visit. Yeah. Dutch Oven Bakery all the time. I was always there for Queen Puffs and Eclairs, and their bread was unbelievable. Where was the Dutch Oven Bakery? Right there, um, 7th Street. Uh, you had uh, 7th Street was there. You had the bank there on one side. Then you had uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy, which was a little hot dog and a hamburger place. And then the Dutch Oven or... Uh, this is on Mill Avenue. Mary Agnes Chick's uh, Tempe Sales was right there. What was Tempe? bought what, your first bedroom set. What was yeah. Tempe Sales? Furniture? Uh, the, everything. Variety, it's just uh, so junk. For, and cloth and stuff. Yeah, fabric. Yeah. And, and I went to school yeah. with the gal that Mary Agnes Chick, her husband, run that place. Uh, and they were still, and then they moved down on, broad, on uh, Broadway there. Still there? Yeah, I think they're yeah. still there. Behind the high Broadway. school. Yeah, yeah, behind the yeah, high by, school. By 14th Street. Yeah. 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 Um, but Mary Agnes wasn't married then. It was her family that yeah, ran that. Yeah. yeah. How about the movie theater? Did you go to the movies there? The movie College theater? theater? College oh, theater? Oh, yeah. Well, it was called Harkins Theater, I think, or Tempe Theater. It was, it was a college theater. College also. theater. Okay, yeah, good college. idea. Okay. It was always the college theater as yeah, long as I remember. That's... And Upton's next door? Upton's, Upton's the candy was store? Right next door, right. Did and you did you dines on the other side? Upton's I was in Upton's all the time. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, That's why I loved learned what turtles were for Upton's. Along there too was like the five and dime yeah, cross was, Mr. Criswell used to work there. Or run that or, on the on the east side. On the east side, the same side as the as theater. up to yeah, as yeah. the theater. Yeah. What? But what was it called? I can't remember. Yeah, Stumpy's Rug was on the other side of Seventh yeah. Street. On yeah, the, I know that. Laird and Dutch. On the south side of Seventh Street. And there was a Tempe uh, Drug at the other corner yeah. on Mill Avenue and Seventh yeah. Street, yeah. Sixth Street, and Laird and Dime was on Six on Fifth Street. Yeah. The APS store. APS was right there on Fifth Street on the corner. On the northeast on corner. The, Where yeah. was Dick Lamb's Market? Lamb. Where where was Dick Lamb's Market? Yeah, Do you where, remember? was that wasn't that on Mill or was it well, on he one was of there, the side streets? That he was later on Mill there. Oh, he was later on Mill. Oh, okay. Well, Dick Lamb eventually worked for El Rancho Markets El Rancho, and the Tempe Center. What, yeah, that's what later on. That's when he that's took correct. over on right there in the center. The yeah. Lambs had a a grocery chain. They had a store in Mesa yeah. as well, yeah. and they were brothers. And maybe more then family. Went down there on A Street. But before that, they had their own independent store, and I yeah, don't know yeah. where that was. Was it Rundle's old store on Eighth Street and Mill? No, 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 no. No, no. I don't they were think down so. further. They were down further uh, east, east, uh, west, west, further out toward yeah. Party. They had a Pacific Orange Exchange, and then they were down in the in the middle. Somewhere I know. They were down there. Way past Farmers, uh, Pacific Orange Exchange was on Farmers, and uh, but they were right down there, maybe. So the Pacific a mile Orange from probably a mile from uh, from Mill Avenue. Avenue. Mill Avenue. Okay. Down, yeah. Now on Pacific the, uh, Orange Exchange. Did you ever work there? Yes, I did. And what did you do there? Squeeze uh, tested grapefruit juice. Tested grapefruit juice. How did you well, test grapefruit? I tested grapefruit, grapefruit for juice for content juice. and sugar content. Yeah. That's how he got through college. Yeah, that's how I got through a buck an hour. All the grapefruit juice I could drink and all the grapefruit <laughs> I could eat. And uh, that's the guy that ran that place was the one that made sure I got a job in Tempe uh, teaching. Do you know Ed what, Harrington. what was Ed his Harrington. Name? Ed, Ed Harrington. Harrington. Yeah, okay. his daughter was Connie Harrington that went to Tempe High. Yeah. He was quite a guy. He was on the school board. 
at that time. No, I, I, I could sit there all day long and wait for the trucks to come in with a load to test and study. That's how I got through school. And when I, uh, when I got ready to leave there, Bruce Harper, I broke Bruce Harper and take my place. Bruce Harper took yours, okay. And he became principal at Tempe High. Right. He got out of the service and I come and took my place. He's going to go back to school, so. Well, Bruce Harper died very young. Oh, and yeah. And uh, was a very popular man in the high school. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. okay. Yeah. Well liked. So, yeah. these are, some of these things happened while you were here. Some things, like him hanging out with Ira Fulton, being yeah. a, you know, being an outlaw, you you saw, you, you quieted him down. When did you start dating Our Joe? senior year, in, in senior January. Year. Okay. It took me all year to get him Started to take to... me out. Oh, <laughs> he was too interested in sports and everything, and none of the kids really. I had no money. Yeah, you, know, you don't yeah. do it. You can't do anything like everybody. You didn't have a car. You didn't have money. What? And I, like I said, I had one stupid shirt to wear and one pair of Levi's. <laughs> Marvin Williams painted an orange stripe up my butt, so. That, Marvin Williams, um, <laughs> best athlete that ever went to Tempe High School. He was always he was always a weightlifter. Yeah. And do you know? No, where he, he was? wasn't always weight. Let me tell you, Marvin did not start weightlifting until he got went to college. Oh, really? We never knew lifted the weight. Oh yeah, yeah. That, okay. that wasn't even talked about. Do you know where Marvin lived? He where lived. he lives? Where he lived at that time. He lived up by you somewhere. He, he, lived, in, he yeah. lived in the 900 block yeah, I was of, say. of McAllister. He lived. Yeah, I know he's up there by you. I don't remember the address, but yeah. I remember. I don't know the address yeah. either. He was right across the street. Yeah. Yeah. And those those were older boys. Yeah. And we were, you know, just yeah. snot-nosed kids that they yeah, kicked around. But he was around. the toughest little man I've ever seen in my life. He was awesome. The, the, the family was rough. There's no question about it. They were all athletes, every yeah. one of them. Right. And the younger brother, who I thought was... Nothing. He went to ASU and started in gymnastics. He was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, well, anyhow, sister was a great athlete. So. Well, Marvin went on to become a teacher and, yeah. and, and he was there with your wife yeah. for years and years as well. So, yeah. uh, but interesting times in Tempe. Yeah. You know, it was like you say, you didn't have money necessarily, but there wasn't a lot of money well, in town, really. No. There were some no, families that were the wealthy. The had money. There were people like yeah. that. that a few, but, but, you know, people didn't really date at that time. We no. just all were together as a group if right. we did anything. Yeah. We would yeah. be at somebody's house, and like Dottie Hennis's mom always fed all the boys, and my mom fed all the boys, and, you know. That's all like we did. That. And you say Dottie who? Hennis. The Hennesses. Hennesses is a big name. Yeah. So you've got to know that name. And Tempe. Yeah. Okay. And what did they do? They were, uh, actually, they were farmers. They had started. land. They had, had lots of land. They were out there yeah. on, Mc, on the corner of McClintock and uh, Guadalupe. They owned that whole section of land in there on the east side. Are any of them still in town? No, they're all, they're dead and Dottie's, Dottie's uh, her mom and dad are dead and Dottie was an only child and she's, living with one of her children out of state now. So they did have children, but the children aren't still in town. No, no, no. Dottie's no longer no. here, uh-uh, okay. in town, yeah. Okay, she went down to someplace down by the border. And well, she was in Douglas, Arizona, uh, and had worked with the Hispanics with a mission project okay. uh, was, across the border for years. She was always trying to get money from Myra, yeah. and I wouldn't give her any money. Okay. So you, uh, what church did you go to? Did you go to the same church? I went to the Catholic church on, across from the Methodist church. And I went, I joined the Methodist church in so 49. You, so you were a Methodist. Uh-huh. I'm and, still there. And you converted, <laughs> and you converted him, right? Yeah. Our, uh, you know, our parents there's said. There's a story there. One you, church. Yeah. Well, yeah. So she came to the Catholic church with me for six weeks. Mm-hmm. And I went to the Methodist church for six weeks. We got all through 12 weeks. The minister that was at her church, I didn't like the priest that was at our church. He was terrible. He wanted everybody to kiss his feet. I didn't know he, but the guy that she had as her minister was awesome. He converted me in a hurry. What was his name? Well, 
Reverend Dexler. Desh, uh, Reverend David Deschler, D E S H L E R, yeah. was supposed to marry us, and then he had to go out of town. And Reverend Bell actually performed the ceremony. But did they have two two ministers there? Um, yeah, they had. The yes, two. we we always had we always had a large ASU program mm -hmm. there. At the that church. church was loaded with. College people. Yeah, we had a lot of college people at our church. A, a good music program. Good music. Good We've always music. had good music. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wesleyan, the, the youth the group. The Wesley group. Yeah. yeah. Now we have nothing. But, oh, yeah. We're, we're no. just, college kids. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so you've managed to get through high school. You've met the love of your life. <laughs> yeah. Finally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big dummy, right? <laughs> yeah. You joined. You went to ASU. Arizona State University. It was Arizona State College at the time. Yeah. And so did I you. Went, you graduated the same year, both of you? No, I went to Good Samaritan Nursing. Oh, no. What year did you graduate oh, from high school? 51. Oh, 51 you were in the from same high class. school. Same okay. class, yeah. So you went to Arizona State College. Before we get to the college and the nursing school, just the things about the college. Were you ever on the campus much as a as a high school student? Did you go on the campus, Arizona State College campus? Just for football games. Just the ball games. Well, that's ball. Where did you get your haircut? <laughs> the first haircut, well, there were three barbers in town. Actually, two at that time. Smith Barber Shop was right there on Mill Avenue. Mill and what? Fifth <coughs> Street, between Mill Fifth and Sixth. Uh, fifth and fourth, excuse me. Uh, Which and Cole, Cope and Ray Bowles worked for Smith's Barber Shop. Okay. Okay. I didn't know them. There was a barber shop right up, right next to Laird and Dines. That's where I got my hair cut. On Fifth Street. On Fifth Street. Just I can't a little remember bit to who the, the east. barber was. Okay. But it was that's what we had, he would charge haircuts for us two bits a piece. And you'd okay. pay him later. Yeah, I'd pay him later. Okay. okay, and that's on Fifth Street. That was on Fifth Street. You remember right? his name? His name? I can't the remember. The individual his name, barber's but name. He was right next to Led Dines. But he wasn't Cope, and he wasn't uh, Ray. No, no, no. Cope was and Ray were both kids. Yeah, they were still young, but they were yeah. working for Smith. Okay, I met Ray Bowles. I was with a friend of hers, Jerry Thompson, a friend of mine who was in our had class. a crush on Sandy. Yeah, in our class. Uh, and I was getting ready to go to co-ed. Okay, it was co-ed, and I was playing basketball. I had a butch haircut, and I uh, went, and Jerry says, come with me, get a haircut. So I went with him to get Jerry the, Thompson. Thompson. Okay. Yeah. I walked into the Smith's barber shop, and Mr. Smith, who was blind, I guess, wanted to cut my hair. It was unbelievable. And when I was leaving, this is the first time I taught, Ray Bowles said to me, uh, come back later and I'll try to straighten your hair cut out. Okay. <laughs> so when I got back to the barber shop at 6.30, and the code was 7 o'clock, and I had my suit on, this <laughs> damn pinstripe suit. Ray, Ray looked at me, went over, there was a hat on a, a rack. <laughs> And he put it on my head. He said, good luck. <laughs> was this your date with you? No. No. No, no. We weren't dating yet. No, we okay. weren't dating yet. I didn't even think about dating her. Yeah. And I was, this was a co-ed. And this, I was asked by Joanne Stonky to go. Dr. Stonky. Dr. Joanne Stonky. Yeah. Right. She was a year ahead so of us. So when I got oh, to the... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Not our class. And I remember I was talking about the Kassage of Mrs. McGinnis. Yes. That was the girl that was for that dance. Okay. Okay. And it was all these backyard roses and, and stuff. From her own backyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. Well, and, yeah. Bobby Flowers? And course, Nobody was going to go to Bobby Flowers. When I, when when I knocked on the door, and I'll never forget the look on that father's face. And he looked at me and said, my daughter must be nuts. <laughs> That was, that was a, Dr. Stalky. That, that yeah. was Dr. Stalky. That was my first date and last date. Yeah. Until I started dating her. Yeah. I said, no. Well, like Dr. Stalky, um, he was known for what? Stalky. Scorpions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did you ever collect scorpions? I never really collected them, but I did give them a few cats so I'd get some credits. That's right. We haven't talked to, I've, I've talked to other people. 
he tested those scorpions on cats. Yeah. So he would take stray cats. Did you take him? Did he pay for the cats? No. Give me points, extra credit. Right. And that's when you're in, in going in to college, college there. Okay. Yeah, Max Jones. And he wanted big cats. Yeah. Yeah, Max Jones. They lived. At, they had that property on Price Road. That the whole section of land on Price Road to McClintock and all that. That was their. That was property. The Jones's property. And uh, they had cats all Is over. Is that, that Cliff place. Jones's parents? No. no Cliff no, Max Jones. Jones. I don't. Uh, Galen Net, was. What was Galen's last name? Crumbaker. That Crumbaker. was. Uh, Crumbaker's, yeah. The Jones. Crumbaker married uh, the. Jones girl. Max's Jones girl. sister. Mad, yeah. And then uh, he was the one that ran everything because everybody yeah. else were kids. Yeah. Yeah. And. Like us, we were just teenagers. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, but that's where we got the cats. They had cats all over the place. People dump them down. Yeah. yeah. Well, they they just reproduce, you know, and yeah, run all over the... Yeah, of course, yeah. Ran yeah. all over the... Yeah. yeah. Max is one of the few kids that had a car. Yeah. Did you have a cat? I mean, a car. I'm sorry. <laughs> a car? No. Never had it. Paul, we're recording your parents here <laughs> as they're talking about their history. About their history? Yes. <laughs> never so, had a car. Never had a car. So now, Sandy, I was just going to ask you about your, your nursing school days. Uh, that's all right, honey. Oh, go ahead and meet. Okay, my, what, my nursing? N nursing school days. Uh, well, I went into Good Sam uh, when I graduated and uh, was a three-year program, just an RN. Uh, Joanne Stonkey was in my class at nur in nursing. And... Uh, uh, I don't know, you know. Did my three years, graduated, and went to work for Dr. Poli. Yeah, Dr. Poli. Oh, that's a biggie. The, he delivered just about all you guys. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, maybe, well, no. He I, delivered a lot of babies in Tennessee. He was Seventh day Adventist. Okay. Yeah, and, and connected to the Seventh day Adventist hospital, you know, down. Which was on. Which, was which on. is Luke. Well, it was Which Luke now, but now. before, before yeah. that, there was a... Well, it was a, a house, and clinic. first the it was a clinic. house, and then, and then it, it was added on to be a small a hospital. hospital. Right, it was called yeah. Tempe But clinic. you mentioned the, the nursing school, uh, that was at, on that what, 12th Street? 16th and McDowell. 16th and McDowell, uh -huh. between 12th and 16th yeah. Street. Yeah, we, we lived in And it was a the, residence dorm. We lived in the dorm for Boys years. weren't allowed, right? No, we weren't allowed. It had to it check, was, uh, check in and out. In and Very out. Very strict. Signed in, signed out. Was it uh, Catholic? Did they have oh, no. nuns? Was it was not, just a nursing school. It was school. not denominational no, at all. Catholic yeah. under St. Joseph's Hospital. Yeah, okay. that was... We had two yeah. nursing schools at that time. Yeah. So during this time period, you were still dating Joe, right? Yeah, much as, as we much could. as you could. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So how did you get back? Did you you didn't commute back and forth? You, oh no, you, we lived in the you lived in the dorm. Yeah, we couldn't yeah. even come home for six months on an overnight. Right. It was three years of residency. It was like a prison. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. So then you went to work for Dr. Poli, who was a Seventh Day Adventist. Uh huh. And Dr. Clark was in that office also. No, was he related to Ken Clark? Not, no. Uh -uh. no. Okay. No, they weren't related. No, no different family. Okay. And uh, then there was a Dr. Bull and a Dr. Price came later. He was younger. Okay. Those were the Seventh-day Adventists. Uh -huh. And then they ultimately opened up what is now Tempe yeah. St. Luke's or whatever the name of it happens to be now. Yeah. Tempe, Tempe Hospital. Tempe Hospital. Tempe St. Luke's Hospital. Yeah. And it's, it's but gone it was by a variety of different Adventist names. Adventist when I was, yeah. So right. They, they, they were closed on Saturday, worked on Sunday? Or what is, how I that work, we were closed. Fridays. Yeah, I worked, worked on, on Sundays. Yeah. No, I worked yeah. every Sunday. Yeah. I said they yeah. Were, they were closed. Their Sabbath was Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, and that, I worked Sundays for Dr. Poley, yeah. Okay. And they had a, a fairly size, good sized congregation. Right in Tempe. Oh, yeah, yeah. they did. Uh -huh. Yeah, Seventh day Adventists. So you had just done a variety of things. Back to Tempe Beach, the Tempe Pool. You started working there when you were 16 years old, Joe, or 17, to teach the kids to swim. When did you get the coaching job for the, for the, for the team? I got the coaching job basically in 19, 1920. 
was a senior, I guess, in high school. Okay, you were, you were a senior still. You were still in high school, and you were coaching the swim team. I Did you coaching. swim competitively yourself? Yeah, I was still coaching and diving. Diving? And I dove. I dove and... Did you swim competitively? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you swam, dove, and coached. And the coach that you mentioned before that was the coach when you started doing this was? Wilbur Koski. Koski? How do you spell that? Koski. How do you spell that? K-O-S-K-E-Y. Oh, was it E-Y? Okay. Okay. He, went, he worked at Ritter School. He was a teacher at Ritter. Okay, Ritter School. Uh, yeah. There's another name, the Ritters. Uh, do you know the Ritter family? No, I didn't no. know the Ritter okay. family. Okay. Um, they were obviously must have been farmers too, right? Probably. Probably. The yeah. Evans, well, see, everybody the that gave. Everybody. Well, there was a Ritter family that lived on uh, Van Ness. Uh, ultimately, see, uh, I don't Ritter. know the story behind why Ritter was named Ritter. Okay. Mowed the other okay. schools, I know because. But these are names. The, these are names that became school names. Yeah. Ritter, yeah, most, yeah. Laird. Yeah. yeah. Those are the Holderman, people. Holderman. All, Holderman, Holderman, all Holderman. these people that, that you were you were around as a kid. Yeah. yeah. They were teaching in the school, Mrs. Rao yeah. and, and Mr. Rao, right? Mr. Rao was our principal. Yeah. yeah. And, his, and his wife taught up to the time when I was in school. So, okay, so you're in. You're, Stop a minute. The name I was trying to think of was Caraway. Caraway. Oh, Dave Caraway. Dave Caraway, yeah. yeah. And now, what were you thinking about Dave Caraway? What was, what was the. He was on my swim team. Oh, Dave Caraway was on your he swim was team. He the best bag, dang backstroker in the world. What what happened to Dave Carraway? He got shot. He got Remember? shot. Is that what caused him to be? I don't know. He was, he was really having problems. I don't know what. You know they, were, all those kids I had on that. See this, I didn't all know. All my that senior Dave boys, I had all those senior boys. Dave Carraway, uh, Jack McCracken, all those kids. They were all really great kids, and Dave was kind of strange. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, you never knew what he was thinking of what he was gonna do. So yeah, he's one of those guys. But he was one hell of a swimmer, backstroke swimmer, but So yeah. was he in your he wasn't in your class, he was younger by Oh, he was a kid. Yeah. I had him like I said, I had those guys when they were all sixteen, seven. They broke the record, the national record and uh, Is he in the same swim team as Chuck Hollis in that group? Caraway, was he before them? Chuck Hollis. Uh, ho uh, Charles Holly. Charles Holly. Yeah. Charles Holly and them were twelve years old. Okay. They were sixteen and seventeen. Those okay. guys were. Yeah. Okay. So Chuck. this is this is a this is a swim team before the Holly group and those guys. They were also good swimmers. Yeah. They were. Those were my those were my sons. Those yeah. Twelve year olds. I loved those kids. They busted their ass for me. They 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 throw up. They throw up. When I get out of the pool, that's how much they wanted to win for me. Oh, come on. And Dave and them, they could win because they were all great swimmers. They were. You well, know, I didn't make them. They made themselves. Right. They were, just had that attitude that nobody was going to beat them. And then they broke the national record, which made me look good. But, you know, couldn't what, beat them. What year was that? Oh, God. I don't know what year it was. It was long, but it stood. That record stood for a long time. Okay, was uh, David? Was he still in high school when that happened? Yeah, they were all in high school. Also in high school. They were all high school kids. Okay, so David ultimately became a fixture in Tempe for walking in the streets, waving his arms, yeah. being kind of drug-addled type of yeah, a thing. Yeah, and his dad worked for the police department. As a, was his dad was a policeman? Or a dispatcher. He was a dispatcher, I okay. guess. I, I, all I know is he worked for the police department. I really didn't get to know his family that well, other than the fact that uh, he was my swimmer. And normally, I know what's. How, did, how do you know the circumstances of why he was shot? No, he just. I was at church when he came running through there. Oh, Sunday, Sunday morning. Mm. Blood all over a brand new carpet. Oh, <laughs> we just to finish that church. I guess I was about. In the 60s. Yeah, so we finished that church in 63, so it wasn't much longer after that that he. I don't know. Yeah, well, I have stories about David when he was in high school with, you know, one of the other people. So he, he that family, and he was around, it was a, it was a real tragedy that 
Yeah, but what, whatever happened to him. Yeah, okay. it was a real tragedy. One of the interesting stories that you've told over the years to me, and, and most recently, is Cecil Pryor. Yeah. So let's go, you were in college, and you were, I was what in, was your majoring, what, what was your, what was I was in secondary to? education. Okay. Okay, I was a history and pre-law ma major. Okay. Okay. Pre-law and secondary education. Yeah, history major. And history and pre-law went together. That's why okay. I put them together. So I was given an assignment. I had an interview. Somebody from the uh, community or come up with a report for this class. So I figured, well, Reverend Pryor and I were good friends. He was always, when I asked to have a dance and stuff at the church, yeah. So how did you meet Reverend Pryor before that? Just going over to the church and... You were a Methodist. I was a Methodist. You was a congregation. My mother taught me that all yeah. churches were good, okay? Yes, yes. My mother taught me that. Okay. But the kids, like, I don't remember. I, they, we would go there and we'd hang out and play and do stuff, and he was always willing, so... And then when I got up in high school, I said, could we have a dance here? And he said, sure. When you want one. And, you know, he was always there for me, and I was always trying to put stuff together. I guess that was part of what I wanted to do. So we had the dances there. And when they said, go interview somebody, I could, well, he's close. I'll go to him, Reverend Pryor, and see what he has to say. So the first question he asked me was, what the hell are you writing this for? I said, uh, for this class. He said, well, what, do you, what do you major in? History and pre-law. He looked at me, he shook his head. He, he you know, a little guy. He said, Joe, you're in the wrong group. I said, what do you mean the wrong group? You belong with kids. You don't belong in the courts or any of that crap. He said, what is your second choice? I said, teaching, teaching high school. And he said, elementary school. They need men like you with our kids. We need men like you with our kids. You belong in elementary education. That's all I had to hear from him. And I said, okay. I wrote him my report. And that's what I wrote in the report that I would advise that I was in my wrong field. I got an A on that report, and that's when I went. Well, you must have been a pretty good student, right? No, I, was a, I wanted to be an athlete. Hmm. I was playing, spending too much time in the gym. But I wrote that report, got an A on that report, and then I went back over to the registration office and changed my major to elementary education which was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because I got to coach, I got to teach, I had a lot of fun. It was, you know, when I picked up my paycheck, it was what, $200 every two weeks, I sang happy birthday. I thought it was the greatest thing in the world, <laughs> picking up a check for $200. This is as a, as a teacher. And, you know, and it was, I was so happy teaching. Yeah. Yeah, I just couldn't beat it. You know, up until that time, I was either washing dishes or squeezing grapefruit. No, no, it's amazing. But that man directed me the right way. Yeah. So I owe a lot to Cecil Pryor. Yeah, quite a bit. Uh, it's a great story in terms of, you know, I, I grew up in that, well, that church yeah. with Cecil Pryor. You grew yeah. up in that church. A lot yeah. of a lot of the kids I went to school with grew up in that church, yeah. and that was yeah. the, the church, the fun church. On of all the churches, that was the fun church because he had it open to the kids all the time. Yeah. Okay, and he that's had great. Why. He had great youth yeah. programs yeah. there for yeah. sure. I, I need to slip back to the to the barber shops real quick. We had we got two of the barber shops in, or yeah. the three of them. There was a barber shop at the corner of College and Mill, in a little shopping center there, right on College. Arizona State College was between college and normal really there wasn't anything and there were some dorms on the west side of college but there was a little shopping center there 
that had some stores and a, and a barber shop, a bar maybe, and, a, and then the barber shop. Do you remember that at all? No. Okay. You remember the Devil's I, Den? I remember when Ray and them moved. Good. We had the Sam Spaghetti House was a house right there on uh, Mill Avenue. Uh, Campus Pantry was across the street. That was the place we were supposed to move Sam Spaghetti House to, okay. but it wasn't big enough. We okay. gave up the house that was right there where Ray actually built his barber shop. On Mill Avenue. Yeah, on Mill Avenue. On the, on the west, east side of the road. East side of the road. Where the Jack in the Box is now, basically. Yeah, where the Jack in the Box right. is. Right. Yeah. Harold Andrews had an insurance so shop he, right next door. He and Cope opened up the barber shop there. Right, and Lopiano was the chiropractor that was in that neighborhood, yeah. in that block, yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. So that's just south of 8th Street, east of Mill, on the east side of Mill. How about this, the mobile station that was on the corner of Mill and 8th Street? Do you remember that, those yeah. people at oh, all? Yeah, I used to go over there and have a Delaware Punch. Delaware Punch out of the machine, right? You know, nobody even knows about Delaware, Delaware Punch. Punch. That's right. But there I was, only pop I drank yeah. all t- growing up because it didn't have carbonation. I, I didn't drink any soda. No. There was a car dealership there, too. Yeah, on, it was right there. On 8th Street. Was it a Ford dealership? It was just... A car dog. A car dealership. And then the alley and then some doctor's offices. Do you remember the lab, the the blood draw lab that was in there with Bill Payne, Tom Hughes, and Dick Flynn? No. Okay. Uh, there, was a, there was a lab, the only one in Tempe, basically, where you could get your blood drawn if it wasn't drawn in the office. No, where was it? It was, it was Lemon. His name was Lemon, or Lemon, Limon, L-I-M-O-N. Yeah. And he had that one, and he had one down later on Rural Road by Tom Hughes's office south of Broadmoor on the east okay. side of Rural Road. But he was in the, in the same building with Tom Flynn, uh, Dick Flynn, Tommy Hughes, and Bill Payne. Now, where was Dr. Flynn before he moved down on Mill? Yeah, he, okay, so Flynn was originally, I thought, I thought that he was partnered with Hughes, Payne, Payne was first. But where were they Hughes, located? Right next to the Pete's Fish and Chips was where Flynn was for a while. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Okay, he was there, oh. but I also thought that Flynn was up with Hughes and Payne. But I don't remember, be. I worked for Dr. Flynn in his office when he was down on south of, south, south, yeah. South of down Broadway. Down by Landings, yeah. Yeah, south of Broadway. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah right. I you saw the day bomb. Yeah. Oh, you did work for him. I did. In fact, okay. I was pregnant with Paula, and I worked until I was, and he delivered Paula and Steve, Dr. Flynn. What, what year was? Uh, well, Paula Paul's was born, born in 62, Yeah. Okay. and I had been working, I so, was already working there before, and then I so, stayed working for him until I was like almost six months, and then I so, worked. Uh, and then Dick Flynn delivered Wayne, of course, in 1961. So you would have been working. There. I would have been working. So there, you you yeah. would have met Millie as a patient coming through. Yeah. Uh, with Dick Flynn, and then Kenny, of course, was born the next year, in 1962, I think. Okay. So. And my mom used to take all of her kids from McKamey to Dr. Flynn, anytime. Free. Some, yeah. Anytime Everything somebody was, was sick or something. In those days, mom would just take them to the doctor. Yeah. You know, that wouldn't happen nowadays. Not well, uh, was Dick Flynn in World War II? Do you know? I don't you, uh, know. I hunted with him for years. We never talked about things like that. Oh, we really? Just, yeah. You know, he, huh. was, he was awesome. Yeah. yeah. I he love was, the guy. He yeah. was my favorite doctor of all time. Of course, time. right. Yeah. 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 So you worked in Flynn's office, uh-huh. Dr. Flynn's I did. office. And then I there did. was a dentist across the way. Was that Yount that yes. was there? Yes. Oh, yeah. Dr. Yount. Yeah. We yeah. both, yeah. we went to Yount yeah. and so did. A, Vic, I don't. We're still going to the guy who took his place. Dr. Getsky, yeah. Yeah. I went to Yelp. You went to Yelp too, didn't you? And Vic, I know, went to Yelp. I don't know. I had to work for him for a summer. And Phyllis Nations? Do you remember Phyllis Wells? Okay, that's my cousin. She worked in Yon's office a little bit. Oh, I was going to say, Phil, yeah. Okay, Phyllis. Yeah. So, okay, so now you're in college and uh, you graduate from college. We're big jumps here, but. Went to the service. Into the military. Yeah, as soon as I graduated, I got my orders. The week after. What year was that? 1951? 
55, okay. Did you go as an officer or as an no, enlisted? No, I was went as a... Peon. Peon. <laughs> but you had a degree. <laughs> yep, but I was sent to uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky. First gyro outfit in the headquarters company. They had all the guys that were deferred from college set up to go to this special group with uh, which we were sent to. So it was awesome outfit. It was just like going to school all over again because they kept the same guys together all the way through. Yeah, so we were a gyro outfit. Everybody stayed in one outfit. Gyro outfit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, all the guys that were college graduates and stuff yeah. were put in this group. Why I don't know, but then they sent us all to Germany. I thought maybe they're going to send you down to the Bikini Island so they could test atomic bombs on. Well, they were <laughs> testing us with uh, first flu shots, flu <laughs> shots, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, guinea pigs. So you you in the military? How many years? Two Just years. Two years, and you came yeah. back. We were married during this time period. Yeah, we were. Oh yeah, yeah. I joined him in uh, Kentucky as soon as they would allow. Mm -hmm. You know. So what year were you married? Fifty four. And your first child was born in sixty two. 65. 57. Or 57. 1957. Yeah. The who, first one, Vic. Vic, okay. Yeah. And then Paula was 62. And, Did, and you had some issues with Paula? Was there something well, about Well, Paula the, was a complete RH, exchange. RH factor? RH, yeah. I'm RH negative. Mm -hmm. And Vic, it didn't matter. We were compatible. Mm -hmm. Paula, it did matter. And Dr. Flynn did two total exchanges. Blood exchanges. I remember when this happened because Millie was very much aware of this. Oh, really? Yes. Huh. And I'll it, be darned. It was a big part of yeah. the conversation. She was very worried. <laughs> yeah. And then Steve is negative like I am, so yeah. he didn't have any trouble. Yeah. So, and the reason we talk about Millie, and Millie was my wife for, yeah. the, for the recording, uh, she came to work at the Tempe Beach as a... I loved her dearly. You know that. <laughs> synchronized swim coach. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you, uh, you, somehow, when she got her degree, you brought her back in. She helped her get her uh, teaching job in Tempe. But when she was working at the Tempe Beach, she was just, what, 19 years old? 18. She was 18, just 19. a kid. Yeah, yeah she just yeah. had come you out for a while. You were chasing her around. Not me. I was, Richard Hand was chasing her was around. Hand, was Hand caught her, and I kept her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when... when at the, at the funeral, you know, Richard Hand was there. Yeah. Uh, he, he was one of your lifeguards. And, uh, you know, I told the story, of course, how, uh, you yeah. know, that he, and he came up afterwards and talked to my daughter, Allison, and said, I'm Richard Hand. And Allison said, shut up, right? Because you know, she's heard the story all her <laughs> yeah. life. Yeah. And there she finally meeting Richard. Huh. So he's up in Las Vegas doing quite well. So anyway. <laughs> it's it's fun to walk down memory lane like this. But Millie and I had had you know a lot of interaction with with you guys. As, well, yeah. You know, she was you were in the doctor's office. Paul and went. Millie too. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so we have this this yeah. interaction. So you get your job as a teacher. Where do you teach? Where did I teach? Yeah, where I taught at Broadmoor School. Broadmoor. I, first started. Okay. I was supposed to report to Mitchell School the first okay. day school started. I got the notice I was going to Broadmoor instead of Mitchell. Okay. So you're at, Mitch, at Broadmoor instead of Mitchell. Now, is uh, Sandy is graduated by now? Where Where is Sandy working? She's working. Working at Doctor Poli. Poli, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, how long did you stay at Broadmoor? I was there till Meyer School. I opened up Meyer School. Opened whatever up. year that was. Okay. Uh, I was probably five, six or seven years at Broadmoor. Okay. Yeah, six years at Broadmoor, three years at Meyer, and then. I had 10 years when I went to McCamey. I had 10 years of school and teaching in the classroom, and then I sent me to McCamey's assistant principal. Oh, okay. So, um, all this time, you were not working at the Tempe Beach all that time? No. What happened? That's the story in itself. That's the story, that's why we're here. Uh, yeah. Uh, Luke Cooper, who became the new city manager, Sandy's dad, in the meantime, became the Parks and Recreation Director and the cemetery superintendent for Tempe, and he was in the Chamber of Commerce. But when he became the Parks and Recreation Director, and I was managing the pool and stuff, 
and Lou Cooper came to town, the word nepotism came up. Mm -hmm. And so I was working longer for the city than my father-in-law. Yeah. But they sent me away. Okay. And from there I went to Mesa Country Club as a swimming coach. Okay. Mesa Country Club. Yeah. That was a private job. Yeah. Uh, that country club is still there. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. I got to make good friends there. And Dr. Kerr, mm. who was on the school board at Mesa, okay. recruited me to go to Mesa. Yeah. <laughs> and I had just been with Ralph, and I said, there's no way in hell I'm ever going to leave this place. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. You're talking about Tempe. Yeah. Yeah. So Ralph Lingerfeld, is that who you just mentioned? Yeah. He was uh, he was the principal. He's the one that really recruited, wanted me to come to McCamey. Okay. Yeah. And he was the uh, school superintendent? No. He, he was, was the principal at McCamey. Oh, okay. He's the second longest principal at McCamey. He okay. had 12 years. Okay. And he asked you, he, he hired you as the assistant principal, no, right? No, Sam Fees actually hired me. But yeah. Ralph wanted me. Okay. He had, uh, there were about... Mike Coffinger and one other gal, they all applied for the job. I never applied for the job. How do you spell Coffinger? C-O-F-F-I-N-G-E-R. Michael Coffinger. Yeah. And he was one heck of a coach, one heck of a football player. Was he great guy. in high school with you, Coffinger? No, no. he's out of Wickenburg. Oh, yeah. he's out of Wickenburg. Yeah. Okay. A Wickenburg kid. Okay, and you're still working for Dr. Poley in between having children and... Uh, well, let's see. I worked for Dr. Poli and until I joined you in Kentucky. Well, this is way this is way later. He's okay, oh, but no, oh, it's okay. But so, no, no, I'm talking about you were. Yeah. You, this is in the early years when you first graduated. You get oh, you went to the military first, and then you came back and went to work as a, as a school teacher. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because so, yeah. he was deferred, and we knew he was going as soon as right. he graduated. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. See, the story was so, McCamey wasn't going to hire me. Ed Harrington, the story is you hired girls that are pregnant, they're going to take off for a year, hire him. Hmm. Okay. But Pop Holman and Ed Harrington were the two that made sure I got a job. But What was Pop Holman's job at that time? He was a principal at 10th Street, so. Okay. And, I had a kid that was being really nice, I was doing my student teaching. Being really nasty, and I picked. And it, I don't know whether you've ever been in 10th Street School, but they had a coat room where you hang up your coats on hangers, sticking out of the wall. And I had this kid who was about as big as you are, just being. Uh, and that was the year of the flu, and so I went in a different classroom every day. They used me as a substitute rather than a student teacher. And uh, Virginia Powell was in that class, a bunch of the kids. This kid was being nasty. I just grabbed him, picked him up, and took him and hung him on the hanger in the cloakroom. Well, some way he got loose and went home and got his dad. And his dad came back. He was going to beat the hell out of me. But Pop caught, stopped all that in a hurry. Bad Pop said, I need you on, on my staff. <laughs> <laughs> that was the end of that story. My mom was his nurse. Yeah. So, there, yeah. then, mm -hmm. and then she was Ralph yeah. Lingerfeld's nurse at McKamey. Ah, yeah. okay. She would have been my, my nurse, too. But, but we had nepotism, nepotism came up again. In sure. those days. That yeah. word. Yeah. yeah. So they moved her to Broadmoor, and when he mm -hmm. went to A McKamey. couple of years later, they threw that word away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because they, they, they were losing too many teachers. Yeah. That, you know, couldn't keep track. Yeah. Families. Yeah, families. Yeah, well, together. families together. Well, you know, yeah. we're, we're over an hour so far. Uh, an hour and three minutes here, so we're just beginning to scratch the surface, Joe. I mean, there's a million things to think about and listen, but are we going to go for a few more minutes, another 15 minutes or so, and talk about... So you, Sandy, you were, when you came back, you, you went to work in the school districts, too, then, well, that uh, at was some point. Much, you, yeah, worked for, you worked for Dick Flynn yeah. in the early 60s. Yeah. When did you start working in the school districts? Um, I... I think I went in the school in 74, maybe. Okay, and, and until 90. Okay. How many years is that? 
That's 15. Yeah, I, I did 16 years. 16 years. years. Yeah. Oh, well, 74 okay. and 90 yeah. and 16 yeah, years. Yeah, right about that. Okay. Yeah, so did 74. you go to where, what school? Did you, you I started at Bustos. Bustos. That was my base school. That okay. was my only school when I started. Okay. And then when they started adding... Then they started reducing uh, the nurses. You know, adding a second school to your... Mm -hmm. Then they brought in an aide to alternate the days. Okay. So I was at Bustos all those years, and then I went to Arredondo and Bustos, and then I went to Meyer and Bustos. And, and I retired. And How about Conley? Were you ever at Conley no, as the nurse? No. Okay. Uh -uh. For some reason, I thought, I thought that you had been the nurse where Millie was teaching at Conley. No, our Steve and Paula went when Millie was there. Right. But, she she yeah. started her teaching in like 1973, I think. She, Wayne was born in 71. Yeah. And they, Mesa, uh, Scotia wouldn't hire her back because she was already tenured and they, you know, it wasn't tenured, but she was making more than a, than a first year teacher. Yeah. So. Uh, she ended up, uh, Joe helped her find her way into the yeah. Conley. And she she was there for, what, 25 years. Yeah. Um, and Rodriguez, um, what was her first name? The, well, she was a nurse there. Reggie's wife. Um, Do you remember who I'm talking about? I know who you're talking about. Why can't um, I remember her first name? She was a nurse at that. Uh, Silk, no. Well, she was at, uh, she had also gone to the... Uh, Good Samaritan Nursing School, but she oh, really? she was probably she was a few years younger, younger than you. Younger than me, yeah. yeah, ten years, I guess. So yeah. that would, yeah. yeah. But that's that you know that's and that those schools have long since been gone. I don't oh. think they have still resident schools. No, no. For that, yeah. yeah. Okay, so your tenure at McCamey is a springboard for lots of you know people remember you as a McCamey icon. They named this building there after you. Um, how about the family names that you know that have passed through there? Uh, the, the, you know, did Gail Walls go there? Gail Walls, the Walls family, the Gail ranch, Walls were there, the yeah. ranch family. Um, who else? Who were the big farmers in town? The Todds. The Todds. Yeah, Todd was the one that did Dick, everything Dick for me. Anytime I wanted to do something special, he was always there. With Dick Todd. Yeah, if I wanted to talk about farming, he brought the farm to the campus. You know, he was that kind of guy. You know? Sure. Uh, studied astronomy. <coughs> he brought. He went out and bought a $100,000 telescope so we could put it on the playground and bring kids back to school every day. That was at Broadmoor. That yeah. was Broadmoor. But it made yeah. a difference. Yeah. Sure. But, but he was, yeah, all those uh. kids. Uh, was the McSpadden family? Do you remember the McSpadden family? What do you mean, the boy? We we went to school with the boys, Keith and. Uh, well, Keith, the older one was Bill, I think. Bill and Keith. Was he in your, Keith? Bill was in they my. They were still younger than us. Yeah. Younger than you. Well, Bill yeah. was my uncle's age. Keith was older. Than he was Keith. Oh, was, was Keith here. ahead of us? A year yeah, ahead Keith of? was here ahead of us. So. And and then Bill, his brother was my uncle's and he graduated I think in 49 or 50. Yeah. Oh okay I guess they were okay Albert. they were in Ben Elkins yeah, and yeah, that they were group. Up there, yeah, yeah. Up there, yeah. Okay um, Saunders, Bertie Saunders <coughs> and Irene Saunders. You that remember those two bell. women? That rings a bell. They well, were musicians they played steel yeah. guitars. Oh not oh Saunders not Sanders. No Saunders. Saunders, Saunders you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Oh I don't. Well it may be. Yeah I, I don't remember that name. Okay. I do. Saunders? Saunders. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. Brickett was the Brickett was the San Hero, the water, water gate guy at the power plant. He had a house which is right in the middle of that hole on where the turn in the the uh, canal is on the golf course, the Kim McDonald golf yeah. course. There was a house in that corner and that's where they lived. It it's all gone now, of course. Huh. So who had a big influence on your life growing up here in Tempe? Who, besides Cecil Pryor, we've talked about him. Harry Coppinger and Billy Coppinger. And? They're the ones that... Coppinger, not Coffinger? Coppinger. C-O-P-P-I-N-G-E-R. Yeah. He wanted to, Harry and Billy, uh, Billy wanted to adopt me. Where did they live? Right next to the Katsu's market. They had the farm out there. Where was Nakatsu's? Um, it's on uh, Eight? University. Yeah. It was Eighth University. Street. Eighth yeah. Street and what? 
past uh, McClintock, between McClintock and Price. So is 8th Street would dead end at uh, McClintock, and then there we would jog down, and then the Nicotias were, was that not 8th Street anymore, it was like trans- transmission? Well, you call it transmission, but it's still 8th Street. It, was, it became university. Yeah. Right. It became university. So that's where the, <coughs> that's where the Coppingers lived? Yeah. And how old were they? They were an older couple? He was well, a teacher. He was a teacher. Out, he she was, was a, she yeah. was a teacher. Uh, I don't know where she taught. She taught in elementary school. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember. Do you remember where. Roy Coppinger? Yeah. Was yeah. that their son? Yeah. No. No, no, that no, was no. her brother. He was a basketball coach when I was in high school, yeah. but much younger. He was a he was a great basketball. He was an all around athlete in every right. sport: yeah. football, basketball, baseball. Right. The only thing he did do was run track. He, I don't know why. He was Harry's brother, right? He was Harry's younger yeah. brother. Yeah. yeah. And they had one brother that had all kinds of uh, physical problems. Oh, Gil, uh, Goddard, Gilbert Goddard. No, no, uh, uh-uh, that was somebody else. Uh, but they had the younger brother, and he had the sister that married Chet McNambar, my basketball coach. She was a real athlete. She was one of those guys that could play baseball with the best man. Roy Coppinger married her? or No, no. Roy Coppinger's sister married Chet McNabb, who oh. was my basketball coach at Tempe High. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, Roy Coppinger was a basketball coach when I was in high yeah, school. When you were, yeah. And, no, not <clears throat> basketball in Tempe. And then he moved to Coronado, Coronado yeah, and yeah. became the baseball coach of some yeah, renown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's a Coppinger, that's a family, it's a Coppinger, it's a Tempe yeah, family. They're all, all, really, yeah. all brothers and yeah. sisters. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, Ralph Lingefeld just has died within the last year or two, right? Three. Yeah. It's been three uh, years since he's been gone. gone. Three, three years. years. Probably. Yeah. And he was but active this, in this stuff hadn't started. started, this COVID hadn't started. Yeah. Ralph had already died. Yeah. So in 1967, you became part of the Tempe Sunrise Kiwanis Club, right? Yeah. And uh, th- that was a effort. The Kiwanis does what helps kids, right? That was, uh, the Kiwanis Club was formed because we, a lot of the guys were school teachers that want to be a Kiwanian, but couldn't get out of class. We couldn't get uh, off for lunchtime because that was an important time on campus for elementary school teachers. So... So what was the function of Kiwanis? To help kids. That was it. Same model we have today. Yeah. Youth. So, uh, but uh, the, the new club, Ralph Ross, who was, newly, they wanted their club was so big that they he decided that we should have the second club and make it a morning club so we could get all these guys that wanted to be Kiwanians in the club. So we okay. grew like 67, 68 in a year of guys, and they were all pretty good guys, so. And then it grew even bigger than that, so. I got to be the fifth president of that club. Followed a lot of good people. Well, the club is still there. It's not as big as it was, but it's still there. Just a little bit, (laughs) a little bit different. Yeah. So, Anybody else uh, that you remember having influence over in your life? Well, when I get back down to the bottom line, I guess I'd have to put my uncle in there, Uncle Sam. He put up with me and uh, gave me a place to live, to grow up in Tampa. Otherwise, I'd have been back in Buffalo and I never would have been able to stay here. What became of Sam? He died and uh, he lived a long time. For a guy of all the family, that came out of here, he lived long because of having a lung removed and everything mm-hmm. else. Yeah, TB. Yeah. He, yeah. Oh. He, he died at 90, son. Yeah. How about you, Sandy? Who was uh, influential in your life as you were growing up here in Tempe? As far as Tempe people? Well, just yeah. in, in your life. What, oh. you know, what motivated you to become a nurse? My mother. Her mother is the most <laughs> important person in her life, Bill. <laughs> Period. What was your mother's name? Virginia. <laughs> and she was yeah. the most one of the most important people in my life. Also, I loved her like my own mother. Okay, that's all kind of kind of mother she had. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I don't know. Um, 
Carla Linkerfeld. Carla, was, probably. Yeah, I would say was, Carla. Yeah, Carla. You and Carla were really close. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Well, I think we. I'd like to do this again and talk about all the activities that you guys have been involved in in Tempe, the old settlers, the reunion, the high school reunion, all the different uh, functions and things that you guys have participated in over the years. Because that's, that's another hour's worth of yeah. conversation, well, I think. Well, it is, it is. <laughs> Not mine. But <laughs> it, it, because you, I have come to learn, Sandy, <laughs> yeah. that you're the one that's making all the lists and doing all the work behind the scenes. Well, if on I the computer, now that we have a computer. With the computer yeah. right. Until but, that time, that was fine. I could write everything, but with this computer stuff, no, I haven't. Right. Yeah. You know I'm an idiot. <laughs> so as, as, much as, as much as he's done things, you've been there propping him up, letting well, him, giving him always, time to do that. I've always tried to help Joe in any way I could. Yeah. You know, so. Because you were on the city council. Right, for a while, and Six they, years. they have a they have a banquet in your honor, and you're not even dead yet. What in the heck's up with that? Right, you know they have <laughs> the moved, Thai. He's the Thai, Thai Foundation. You were, Kelly you know, look, look, look at the things you've done with the Thai Foundation. There are just dozens of things yeah. in this community that have been helped along by you well, and uh, and you, that. as far as that goes. Yeah. And, and uh, like I said it's uh, it's become a family thing to sure. the foundation. So. Yeah. What do you think of Tempe as a community? What do I think of it? Yeah. I'd never leave it. What's yeah. that? Uh, yeah. you know, and, uh, we had a, once she wanted to move. To Ch Chandler. On the other side of Price Road, yeah. which was Chandler. <laughs> <And> that never <laughs> happened. And, you know, it was over the house because they had a big kitchen with lots of cabinets. And I said, no way in hell. And, you know, uh, I, was, I had a nervous breakdown moving here yeah. from <laughs> Broadmoor. Yeah. So what was your address on Broadmoor? 1815. <laughs> Who built those homes in there? I was just talking to Brad, somebody. Bradley. Bradley built that yeah. house? Okay. Yeah. Did he build that whole development? Yeah. Uh, half of that development. The other yeah. half was done by West, Wesley. That The cheaper homes were on the other side. By Canal? On the other side of Las Feliz. Okay. And uh, th that neighborhood now is... That those people in there have redone that whole neighborhood. Yes. It's beautiful. Which Bradley, by the way? Elmer. 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 Okay, there were two that was brothers. Elmer's right? first, that was Elmer's first subdivision. Subdivision, yeah. and he got so many complaints from people. And you know, he built a beautiful home. Really, we thought I loved the home, but we had people that were complaining constantly. That's when he decided he sold the property. All that whole subdivision out there was supposed to be Bradley Homes, and he sold it to Wesley. Whatever, I think it was. Not Canal. No, it wasn't Canal. They no, 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 canal. no, no, Wesley, somebody. Yeah. Anyhow, he sold that property to those people, and he decided he was going to do nothing but custom homes. That's when he started custom homes. But it was over yeah. those crazy people in my neighborhood mm -hmm. that were raising hell with a robot did, stuff. Did, um, had Wally McCook, do you remember Wally? Do you know who Wally McCook yeah. is? Um, was he one of your neighbors? I don't um, Remember why I had, had all the McCook kids. I have all the McCook kids. Of course. What McCook was in Hershey Candy, rep for Hershey, over on Palm Crop. Was that a McCook? He used to put out... Oh, you're talking about, but I don't that think wasn't it was a McCook. McCook. No. Oh, okay. Put out boxes of candy bars that trick or treat because he... He was a rep for her. Oh, okay. And the kids used That's to like the guy gives out full size candy bars at, at Halloween, right? Yeah, he just, gave, yeah, he just would put boxes of them out there and let the kids come and take them. That was over. Huh. I thought that was a McCook. Maybe not. I guess not. I had the McCooks at wow. Meyer School. As well. Yeah. yeah. So, what years were you at Meyer? Oh, gosh. After I was. I was. I left there. <laughs> well, I was at Bustos. I left there in 67. And then Arredondo, and I retired from Meyer. So. Uh, you went with Carla, so. Zeroff was principal when I left Meyer. Yeah, no, I know. And then uh, and, I don't know how long he was there. I'm just trying to see if you were there when Allison was there. Oh, yeah. I was there. Yeah. Yeah, I used okay. to call Millie if Allison got sick. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't get. Yes, I could just still see those long blonde boys. Yeah. Braids, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was there then yeah. when Allison was there. Yeah. 
So like I said at the beginning, we've, we've, we've had a lot of interaction in our families for lots of years. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, it's fun to, I'll listen to this and then I'll have a million questions again. Uh, I'll send it to you if you want to listen to it. It's an hour and 15 or 16 minutes. Of, but we haven't even begun to touch on a lot of the things that you've done in the community. Just memory lane about what we did as kids. Right, and growing up in the swimming pool. Did you roller skate, by the way? Did you ever go to the roller derby down there? Not at Tempe Beach, no. No, there was a roller derby, right? Yeah, a yeah, roller. Place, yeah. 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 yeah, that was closed up when I was running the pool. The university, something that nobody else has even talked about yet, There's, there's, there was a small ghost uh, service station. Uh, it's on Myrtle, actually, just off of, of uh, Apache. There was where the... Uh, they had, a, they had buildings in there where the college students, the returning veterans, would stay in these dorms, not dorms, but like... Hut, the Quonset the, huts. The Quonset huts. Yeah, yeah. They weren't really Quonset huts, but well, they were they were big, big buildings. Yeah. Uh, there was a street right there, Myrtle, and there was a small restaurant back about a block off of Apache. Do you remember that at all? Owned by the Ricketts. The Rickert, sorry, Rickert family. Do you remember the Rickert family? No. And then Beck owned the service station, which is just like a two-pump service station, right on the corner of Myrtle and Apache. Very small. Across the street, they ultimately ended up making the Pancake House or some kind of a restaurant there. You know, with the, it's still there. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it was just it was where I hung out because I hung out with Alan Beck, yeah. the son that, was, that his son was in my high school class. But... You know, those are the kinds of businesses that are disappearing, have disappeared. Yeah. Long's Grocery, do you remember Long's Grocery? Lois? That rings a bell. Yeah. Well, and the, the butcher, the, you know... Uh, Livingston. Livingston. Yeah. yeah. Art, Tiffany, and the Japanese. Yeah. Right, and the, and, and the garage, Despain's, Carl yeah. Despain. Oh, yeah. On, on 7th Street. Yeah. All those things were just part of... Birchett, the little Mrs. Birchett, the oh, house. Oh, the Birchett lady, yeah. yeah the did, they, lady. did they have a farm too, the Birchett family? Uh, I don't even remember ever living down there. And all their flop, rose gardens. About 4th Street in that yeah. area, whatever. Yeah, and the house is still there, but yeah. the trees and everything are all cut down, and of course yeah. there's no birds, I suppose. But yeah, she was quite a lady. <laughs> did you ever take classes from your school down there? We went from Payne Training School down there. No, no, never. No. You substitute taught at the at the Payne Training School. Too. Well, I did he, he my was, first classroom experience at Payne Training School. He was still in college. I was still right, in my junior year in college as a student teacher, yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Crouch. Yeah, and uh, I learned a lot about discipline. You don't discipline kids to go to Payne Training School, <laughs> even when they're bad. Yeah, oh, uh, you, you got the wrong boy for this job. <laughs> I don't want to be teaching here. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Huh? Miss, but I love Mrs. Grouch. She was such a patient lady. I couldn't believe how anybody could let kids do what they did to her and get away with it. Do you remember a principal by the name of Miriam Ward? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, she yeah. had my, I was her favorite son. Now, <laughs> did she have twin children, David and um, a boy and a girl? Do you know where she lived? Uh, Clayton's. Huh? I'm trying to. Re the reason I'm asking is that I we knew the Ward family, Miriam, we, Mrs. or Mrs. Ward. She was like a campfire girl or Girl Scout leader, and oh, which reminds me, were you ever in Boy Scouts? I was in the Boy Scouts in Buffalo, but never out here. Did you, were you did you do Girl Scouts or campfire girls? Uh, no, I didn't. My mom and my sister, my mom was the leader of Campfire at one time. Do you know where they got their uniforms? Um, I remember my mom making... What, like the Boston store? Did you well, ever shop at the Boston oh, store? Oh, absolutely. I bought my boys Levi's there all the time from the Getz. Mm -hmm. yeah. Boston and the sell, of, sell of, uh, sporting goods. Oh, yeah. He and there worked was, for Joe Sella. He delivered, yeah. A George. Or, 
I, I or did George. It was for George. George, yeah, George Sella. And I only did was that his day? for Joe Sella. Yeah, I Joe Sella. Did. And they had a dry cleaners I forgot yeah. about. Somebody yeah, mentioned George. it the other day. Uh, right for behind George. us. Yeah, were they, were they brothers or what? Mm-hmm. Were they brothers or what? Yeah, they're George and Joe. Okay. Yeah. And George had the cleaners, and I would... That's one of the jobs I had. I had a lot of jobs. <laughs> that one was a great job. I got to deliver up on campus. Man in the hall! Man oh. in the hall! <laughs> <laughs> it was a great job. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the cellars yeah, were. Yeah. I, only time great I worked people. for Joe would give me. Joe gave me my pay, first pair of basketball shoes to play ball. There was a Dairy Queen on 5th, 6th Street at the alley. Do you remember when yeah. it was back at the alley the there? There was a Dairy Queen. And it became a milk palace eventually yeah. when they when they moved it to Tenth Street. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm having. I've, I've asked people about it. They don't necessarily remember. They only remember is the Tenth Street Dairy Queen, yeah. but originally, right across from the bank, the bank was on the corner of Sixth Street, and there was a service station there too. That was Clark's property where Dairy Queen is. Yeah. Okay. They owned that whole. Do you remember the Williams family? Uh, there, there was a Dick Williams or Richard Williams that lived on Tenth Street behind that. Uh, Dairy Queen uh, growing up. Oh, Sam, that's uh, Tom Williams' folks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's oh, yeah. yeah. I got to think of it. You know, you throw names out at me. Uh, yeah. You know, Tom Williams was, yeah. yeah. He went to high school with the son. They had in their backyard a cooler and it was a refrigeration unit. They had this big, remember the water cooler, water towers that would cool water? And so they had an air conditioned house rather than an evaporative cooled house. Oh, okay. But this big device is in their backyard to chill the water. Oh, because, yeah, Tom went. Because we all lived with, yeah, we all lived with evaporative cooling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we did. We did have <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Yeah, what cheats when I What cheats when it got really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right. We'll do this again, I hope. And... Oh. Uh, it's fun it's fun to do this yeah, so i'm we're going to sign off here